Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Deep Shelf by Ninth Haven Games. This is a two to four player game for ages 13 and up, and it takes about 30 to 45 minutes per player. And in the game Deep Shelf, you are a mining colony attempting to gather resources in the shallows and depths of the ocean, as is your, as is your opponents attempting to also gather resources. You are going to be building mobile extractors, smelters, laboratories, colonizational facilities and more as you attempt to delve into the deeps and gather what you need. There are multiple different types of resources like gold or palladium, osmodium, and of course kelp. And you're going to be utilizing these resources to build complexes, to add workers. You're going to be using them to go up on a science track or to go and develop better things for science that will indeed get you better upgrades. But beware, because as you delve the depths and gather more resources, you're going to be exploiting the area, which is going to reduce the amount of resources and cause some environmental havoc. And as the environmental track goes up, you're going to summon unique things into the game, like the dragon, which will be moving throughout the game. Or, of course, you're going to get some type of benefit or change the market in some way. The game is going to end when one of each player or any number of players gets to the very end of the three tracks on the science board, or I should say the uh, upgrade board, whatever it's called. And you're also going to also end the game when you are pushing up the exploitation track to the location based on the number of players you're playing. Will you gather the most resources, obtain the most victory points, and construct the best mining facility possible? Find out in the game Deep Shelf, currently on Kickstarter. So there's quite a lot to set up in Deep Shelf, and we'll just go over the basic idea of how the game is set up. First thing you're going to do is take out the main board of the game and place it within reach of all players. And then you're going to be setting up the board. Uh, you're going to be setting up the market, and there's a certain area in which you're going to be placing the market cubes, which I believe is a second from the left, and that's going to determine how how much money each of the resources is worth at the beginning of the game, and it will change as you exploit uh, the environment or as you are buying or selling resources. You're going to be adding these like developmental markers that you're going to be utilizing in the game when you build certain buildings, and you'll place them down in these nine areas. You're going to be placing your uh, cubes down below on the very bottom of the exploitation track, which is going to symbolize when the game is going to end as you do certain things like deplete the environment or as you make certain things like smelters. Then you're also going to be blocking off certain portions of the board depending on how many players you are playing with. Additionally, you're going to set up start locations for each of the players and place certain uh, tiles down on the board based on where people have set up their locations, where people are going to be playing. And then, of course, at the very end of the board is going to be two unique uh, spaces that are going to give you some type of bonus at the end of the game or bonus that you're going to be able to utilize when you get there. Go ahead and set the pool of credits or money in a pool within reach of all players. And then go ahead and set up your upgrade track, giving everybody zero. Uh, on this board over here, where you're going to be upgrading the three different types of ologies and place one of each player's cubes on the far left side. As you upgrade your science, you'll be moving these markers along. And then you got the development board, which is going to have a set of four rows and uh, I believe it's like six columns, uh, where there's four upgrades in the top row, three in the next row, two, and then finally one. And of course they get better as you move on, but there's going to be a higher cost for them at the very top is a discount board where as you spend resources in the game you'll be able to gather discounts on the secondary row of each of the developments that are going to allow you to purchase them easier as you do. Then, after that, you're going to make sure that your submarine is on a specific location based on the setup of the game, and you're also going to get two player boards. You're going to get like your submarine board and then your corporate board, which is going to have A, a place for your submarine to go at the beginning before you place it. You're gonna have all these tubes that you can utilize throughout the game that you'll set next to the board somewhere. You're gonna start with one kelp, and you're going to have spaces for all your upgrades that you gather as you develop your submarine. Um, additionally, on your other board. It's going to include a marker for your starting player. It's going to include all the different types of buildings, which is what you're going to place. Uh, in this case here, the Mobius Incorporated is going to get three mobile extractors they'll place on their board, two smelters, two labs, as well as two scientists, and three of these worker complexes. And finally, of course, you're also going to be getting three crawler docks with three crawlers that you can place down. These are like your resource gatherers and a unique building that is going to supply you with 
some special bonus, whether it be um, a passive ability, it could be another type of smelter. They're usually like unique, more powerful buildings, but they also are going to give you an extra action card that will get unlocked when you build it. And finally, of course, you're gonna get 10 credits in the game and you're gonna have these starting six cards. These are your action cards in the game that you're going to be able to utilize as you play your turn. You'll take, I'll explain that in a second, but you'll take them and you'll place them down. And these things are what you're going to be doing in the game. And after you've done that for each and every player, you'll set aside all the resources. There's going to be the basic ore and then the refined ores of the three different types, palladium, gold, and osmodium. Then you're also going to get a kelp pool, which is what you're gonna need whenever you do science actions or build certain types of buildings. And finally, slag. It's kind of like a wild resource, but it needs to be refined in order for it to be used. All the rest of the dice and tokens will be set off to the side and you're gonna have two bags, one for the deep and one for the shallows, which will have all the rest of the tiles that you're going to see in the game. After that, you're going to begin the game deep shelf. So as you can see, this game is actually rather large and there's a lot to it, but your turns are actually very simple. How your turn works is going to be like this. You're going to take any one of these action cards here. You're going to play it in the first action card slot on your board. You will conduct, and you'll always do this, the card from top to bottom, completing as much as you possibly can. And then you're going to go on to the next card, your next action card, and place it in the second action slot. And once again, complete that from top to bottom. Some cards are going to have like a secondary bonus ability that you can do after you've finished with the text on the card. This is kind of an optional thing and you can also, I believe, play this on its own for just the special effect. And after you've played both of your cards, you're going to move the second action card that you played over to the overworked section of your board, which means that you won't be able to use it for the next turn, but you're always going to be able to take your first action card and place it into your hand. After you play both actions and move the second over to the overworked, you'll pass and everybody will take a turn. On your next turn, you'll once again rinse and repeat. You'll play a card for your first action, you'll play a card for your second action, and then when you return, you'll get your previous for a second action that's in your overworked area, move your second over to the overworked area, and pick up your first as always. And it's going to continue like that. When you build your main building, that is when you're going to get your extra action card, which is gonna be a unique action that you can take only specifically for your faction, and the game will move and progress as normal. Now, eventually, when, like I said, either each of the science tracks have reached their end, or when the exploitation track reaches whatever player length that the uh, game is going to be based on the number of players that will trigger an end game and victory points will be scored. Let's talk about the different actions in the game for Deep Shelf. Uh, one of them is going to be your science action. This is what's going to allow you to gather and develop technologies. In order to do that you're going to have to discard a kelp. You're then going to discard any refined ore from your surface storage or area only, which is the area in which you've returned your submarine back to your base and put it off into your surface area. And you can spend the refined ore, which is going to be the big ones here. These are like the fancy ore that you'll be getting as you, um, not only as you like pull and extract, but as you smelt as well. And you'll be able to place them down in the de development track as you buy stuff. And there's a purchase cost for all the things in the development aboard. And as you purchase things, you're going to get a discount on the secondary space of those cards. So for instance, or tiles, I should say, if this one here is a uh, recycler, it's gonna cost one osmodium and one gold. If you have a gold discount, you'll be reducing that by one. But you're never gonna reduce the far left, top left section of the board, regardless of discounts. So you're gonna be utilizing discounts for that second row. And you can purchase, um, one of them or two of them. Each player's deck of cards, while it has the same actions, has kind of a unique twist to them. Uh, some characters are going to be better at mining, others are going to be better at mobilizing and moving factories, etc, etc. But you'll be purchasing either one or two of these developments here. And then after you do that, if you developed a technology, you'll be advancing on the science track, one or maybe even two spaces, and you'll choose what you want to do. And as you push your cube along these tracks here, you're going to gain benefits. Most of the time, it's just gonna be a benefit that happens immediately as you move onto the space or over the space. And sometimes there are abilities that you'll get to keep. You're gonna be able to constantly have. It might be reducing your upkeep by one or moving the market or giving yourself an extra market value or being able to draw an extra tile when you search or when you scout. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how that works. You're going to be spending and pulling and then moving. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about another one here, processing ore. Um, the, the, what you can do, actually, no, well, before we do that, we'll do this one here. Now, this one is extract. It's the main principle idea of the game. You'll pay your upkeep cost, whatever that might be, 
and you'll extract resources with your submarine and each extractor. And extractors are going to be uh, buildings that you place on a certain space that has resources underneath it, and you'll be pulling those resources off of the board and each of these spaces on the board is going to have a die value based on the starting value of that tile. If you have five palladium and you have a um, what are the extractor on that location, when you extract, you will remove one die pip and you will place a resource on that space. And if your submarine is there, because your submarine can also extract, it can go into your cargo hold. And there's a number of cargo spaces based on your submarine. And this is the main way you're going to be gathering resources in the game, whether it be taking, other, taking it from other players or being able to extract it yourself. Let's go ahead and talk about Processing ore. You're going to gain a buck every time you do this, or credit. You're going to refine up to one ore in your surface area, which is right off of the board, basically. It's when you go off back to your dock. And then for every smelter that you have, you can process up to two ore in its space or an adjacent space. So your smelters are a unique building that can cause exploitation to move up, but it's also going to be able to make your regular ore into refined ore. So raw into refined. It's the small cubes into the large ones. And then for every um, additionally, there might be a benefit here. This one says you get an extra buck for every smelter unit that you have. Uh, moving. Moving is a pretty simple aspect of the game. When you play your move, your submarine will get a momentum, and you'll also spend to uh, move or dock, basically. Your submarine can move into any adjacent space it is currently next to. So you'll basically take your submarine from one space of the board and move it to an adjacent space. Each of your crawlers, as well, is going to gain two momentum. Crawlers are like resource gatherers. They can kind of bring stuff in and pull them back from the board to your surface area. And you can gather up to two ore for each of the smelters. Those, of course, will gather two momentum, and you can move them across the board like so. After that, if you have one or more unit on an unexplored shelf, you can scout, and you can choose one tile to go in each location. So when you move to a space that is empty, you'll be able to draw two tiles from the bag or bags and place one down onto the space that it is uh, currently residing on. Now note, however, that these guys here, the crawlers, can only move across spaces with tubes, which are things you're going to build that kind of attach to the crawlers themselves. So if your space is not adjacent to a tube with a crawler, you cannot move to that space. However, if that space is empty, you'll also scout with that crawler, thusly drawing two from the bag and placing one down. Some tiles will have effects that will give you benefits. Others are going to be resource or ore that you'll be able to utilize by smelting. And that's how you're going to move around in this game, whether it be going to your dock or going out to the far depths of the game. Another thing that you can do is construct. Construct is allowing you to spend resources to make up to one facility in an unexplored location adjacent to your tubes. Sometimes it might be two facilities. So depending on the type of class that you play, you'll be able to make one or two buildings. And it's always going to be next to one of your tubes. It has to be a space that hasn't been controlled yet, and it has to be a space next to your tubes. And the cost of each of your facilities is on the left-hand side of each of the areas on your board that has facilities to place. The average cost in white is how much it's going to cost when you just put it on the board, and there's a cheaper cost where as long as it's next to one of your opponent's spaces, it'll be one, it'll be one two, or maybe even three less, but there's going to be a cost. You have to actually give your opponent's space that you're building next to a slag, which is kind of like a wild, unrefined resource. And that is how you're going to construct. You spend up to two ore uh, to assemble tubes or crawlers after that, meaning that you can use any ore that you want, refined or raw, to build tubes and crawlers. And tubes are these spaces that start off, you start with one at the very beginning of the game, connected to your dock, and you'll be building out along the game board and placing them down. And this is going to allow you to build adjacent locations and place and move your crawlers through those locations as well. And crawlers are the same thing. They'll start in your dock, they're going to give you two movement, basically the resource gatherers that kind of move along your tubes and gather resources and bring them back. And then finally, your last thing is home base. This one's pretty simple. You can place your submarine uh, at dock in order to unload all the cargo that you have. Some submarines have more cargo than others. And then, of course, there's upgrades in the development area, which will give you even more cargo. And then, you, of course, after you've unloaded and brought your submarine back home, you can resolve up to two market transactions with resources in your surface storage. So whatever resource storage that you have, um, this area is where you can spend for your market. And this is the market here we talked 
talked about previously. Whenever you buy a resource, the track is going to go to the left, and whenever you sell a resource, the track will go to the right. And you can do this twice. So I can say, oh, I'm going to sell my Osmodium uh, that is refined for $5. So it's gonna go down one. And I want to buy a kelp, so I'll spend one to move it up. If you're selling raw ore, there's a price on the far right. If you're selling the refined ore, there's a better value, which is going to be on the market track itself. Kelp is always going to be worth whatever kelp is worth. And that's basically all the actions you take in the game, other than the unique abilities that will come with placing your mega building. The mega building will also have a cost. Sometimes you're going to have a unique ability on your player board at end of game, and other times they might have a secondary bonus action that you can take on the card specifically. And that's what you do in the game. You're going to be gathering resources. You're going to be gathering credits. You're going to be spending those credits to, to uh, run your upkeep in order to uh, exhume the resources. And you kind of want to keep that balanced in a way. And you want to try and get across the science track or maybe move the exploitation tracker in order to win the game. But you're going to mainly be uh, trying to assist your colony in order to place as many buildings as you can, gather as much space on the board as possible, and utilize things in a way that's going to make you win the game before one of these two endgame victory conditions trigger. When the endgame victory condition triggers, everybody gets one more turn, and then you're going to add up the end of game scoring. And there's a lot of uh, end of game score. I mean, you're going to be taking a look at how much credits you have, how many resources that you have left, and for sm small minor things. You'll be looking at this board here, getting any bonus points that you might have, as well as whoever gets to the very end. is the worth, you get, If you get, you get first place, you get two points. Second place is one point. Um, you're going to get points based on what uh what, what you built, usually speaking, and where you built it, whether it be in the shallows or the deep. So the more deep you have compared to anybody else, you get more points, or the more in the shallows. Um, some of these developments are going to give you bonus victory points at the end of the game, and even certain tiles at the end of the game can generate victory points for adjacent spaces. And there's a lot of ways in which you can gain points in this game. And that's the idea of it. There's still some more to it. I mean, you're talking about scientists that when you place that, when you gather a scientist for building a specific building, you'll be placing them over here, which will give you certain bonuses like plus one to smelting or extracting or research. When you draw an exploitation event, you'll be doing that event. Then of course, the player to your left will be doing the market aspect of it, which is moving and changing the board based on the card. And the player that draws it will actually get to move the dragon. When you move it, you have to move it in the number of spaces it asks you to, and then you can also rotate it. When the dragon faces your certain buildings that are in the red, you're gonna be getting an upkeep. And when it hits the green, you'll be getting currency. And the dragon starts off in the middle of the board here. I didn't say that during setup. Um, you need to make these worker complexes in order to uh, reduce your upkeep because as you build buildings, you're going to have to increase your upkeep by the cost. Placing out more crawlers will get you more resources and your build big building is gonna focus mainly on what you do. And of course, you need to build developments in order to A, move your submarine more than one space and your crawlers, be able to even get into the deep area. And there's bonus victory points, increasing the amount of storage you have, the amount of cargo hold you have, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a lot to this game as far as what you can do, but uh, how you do it is actually quite simple, which we'll get into now with my review. Hopefully I gave you enough idea of what Deep Shelf is and how you play. Deep Shelf is a 4X game minus one of the Xs. You're not going to be exterminating anything. You're, well, unless you consider exterminating resources or something, that's the main objective of this game is to get that ore, refine that ore, build your facilities, build your upgrades, your developments, move across the science track. It's all about learning, exploiting the land, and utilizing the resources to generate you currency and to make your facilities better. You're a resource engine that's pumping and pumping and trying to create and increase and improve prove and build down deeper into the depths, but beware in the depths there lurks a dragon that's going to kind of mess with your facilities in ways you probably won't want it to. Unique tiles as you flip them over and pull them out of the bags, they're going to generate you value, they're going to generate you one-time use effects, and of course the most important thing, or as you exploit the land, you're ripping resources from the land, making things unstable, which allows the dragon to move. And of course you get a benefit for doing so, but there's a cost at the market because certain resources gonna get, are gonna get messed with as the game progresses. Each of the locations is gonna have a certain number of resources and as you, as you gather resources or extract, it takes its toll and it flips these guys over, which then of course causes more exploitation to happen. 
This is all about building. It's about resource collecting, and of course, it's about the burn. The very beginning of the game is going to start off a little slow. Your objective is going to be to move out, to start building extractors, and to start building smelters, and then eventually you're going to be able to build la labs and worker complexes when you need your upkeep to go down. You'll be taking your one action, Foley, two action, fully moving that second action, getting back whatever action you played previously, and returning to your hand, and you're passing your turn. Your turns are very simple and very straightforward once you understand how the game is played and what your actions do. But in that becomes a lot of options to choose from. Just the build action alone is going to allow you to build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things, and each of them interact different ways with different actions, which is going to impress and provide unique things to your board. What I really, really love about this game, honestly, my favorite thing, is how different each of the factions feel. Mobius Incorporated is going to have um, mobile extractors that I believe will let you move your extractors around the board. It's all about mobility with this specific faction. If you're playing with the Conjunt Industrial, it's all about building. And in fact, you get bonus points and compared to any other faction, which is going to allow you to gain victory points in the game for each three buildings that you build. And you're going to get a lot of buildings to utilize, which means you're going to have a lot of movement that you're going to want to get. You're going to want to have a lot of smelters to extract resources. It's all about the gathering and pulling as much as you can. Or you have the Men's <laughs> Menaso foundation they're about science you're going to be trying to gather as much tech and just trying to gather as much upgrades as you possibly can etc etc and of course even your basic actions which are all basically the same have unique differences with each of the factions that you're playing with and that takes its toll being able to utilize them in a unique way twist the game up each and every time, which I love. I love the bonus facilities that give you an extra action that even changes the game up even more, giving you that one extra thing that you can do. Sometimes, most of the time, it's going to be something you're already familiar with, so when you read it, you'll just know what it is that you're going to be doing with it, which is nice. You're not gonna have to think about um, what's this next action and how is it going to kind of function with me. It's like, oh, I can also smelt again, but there's also some other unique things I can do with this. What a twist. Then, of course, being able to upgrade. I feel like I have this kind of like, I'm managing how I place my buildings out on here and whatnot, but I'm also managing over here and I have to use my resources as I, as I can. Uh, because certain actions, like how you upgrade certain things is gonna require just your surface area. Whereas other things to be built, like for instance, buildings in the middle of the ocean or under the ocean, those can be used with resources that you control. As long as you control a resource, meaning you have a unit on there, you're going to be able to use that resource most of the time to build what you want to build. Uh, the theme of the game. This game has a ton of theme. You feel like you are delving deeper to the ocean. You feel like you're kind of a, you're not as strong when you first start out, you're moving your submarine out, you're trying to decide where you want to place and how you want to place what things and what's your best track in order to gather what you need in order to win the game. And as you go, you'll start placing out your tubes and building new buildings. And all of a sudden, about midway through the game, you start to see how much of a force you are. Of course, you always want to, in my suggestion, gather that those resources, gather the money, uh, so that way you can return to the base and then and sell these guys off. It then lowers them, making them cheaper to buy at the end of the game. And it gives you the ability to build more buildings. And it's kind of this thing that you learn as you progress, like what's the best way of working together in order to gather deeper, go deeper and deeper into getting what you want. But of course, the theme of also exploiting the land and things happening due to the fact that you're unstabilizing the amount of resources that is under the ocean is a nice touch. And including the little dragon that moves around and it's not gonna destroy your bases most of the time. Like there are some cards and effects that may do that. But in general, this thing's just gonna make your life a little bit more miserable. It might be destroying some robotics facility. And so because that can increase um, your production costs, your upkeep, or it could give you a benefit if it's kind of on the, on the sides of you. So how you place it and where you place it matter. And if it gets surrounded, it kind of like flies away, it goes away, disappears because it no longer has any way of escaping or a way of eating. Um, and also the fact that not, a, not every space is going to be just resources. There's locations that are going to give you one-time bonus effects. There are spaces that will allow you to, when you refine them, when you when you um, pull them up, extract them, you'll be getting these little tokens that kind of turns into a minor set collection uh, aspect to the game as well. It just has a heck of a lot to offer. Each of the factions feels very, very unique, and you feel like you're delving in trying to gather resources for your specific complex. All along the while, 
as trying to make your submarine as amazing as possible by the time the game ends. And like most good games, basically you're always wanting to continue playing this game even up to the very end and then suddenly you realize the game is over and there's still things you want to do which makes you want to kind of continue playing the game and kind of go oh i really wish even though the game was like quite it's quite a long game but you feel at the very end you're like okay i've got my engine it's all ready and it's all set and we're moving i'm like okay now i only have a certain number of turns before that track reaches the very top or before the science levels go all the way I have to really decide how and where I want to end things and now it's coming down to the, the, the grittiness of choosing what specific action I want to use and when and each of these actions start being beneficial. What second action do I want to play because I'm not going to get it next turn. I need to move next turn but I want to move second on this turn. So if I do that I'm not going to be able to get the card back and these choices start getting very very thick and very very crunchy which feels very very good in the game. Uh, that being said the artwork. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. The colors are vibrant, the deep blues and the light greens, the shallows, each industrial complex feels different in how you're working with it. And it ties in with um, the art as well. Like one's gonna be more mobile than the other and it feels more mobile or one's like the more strong building and then it feels that way. I just, I like how attached this game is in theme and artwork and direction for each of the different factions and for how the board looks. Everything has this like double thickness to it and there's, you can place everything in it to the locations where they go, moving the dice and removing them. While it feels a little mechanical, feels good to know that you're depleting resources and when that resource is gone, you know what's going to happen and there's going to be a cost and a bonus to what you're doing to the, the, the land. Overall, Deep Shelf is a really, really good game. If you don't mind, let's go into a few of the little small things here that I would consider negatives. If you don't mind a long game, this is a thick game and this is a heavy game. This is one of those games that when you get into it, you have to be prepared to spend about two and a half to three hours playing this game because once you start, you're most likely not going to want to walk away because as you, this, there's this, always this growing momentum in Deep Shelf. You are constantly feeling like you're pushing and pulling and okay, I've got this now, let's move on. I can do this. Oh, and I got this new upgrade. Okay, I can now do this. And it just gives that unique little feel that I don't see a lot in even these bigger games where I feel like, yes, the next turn's really gonna be the, the one that matters. Oh, wow, now the next turn's gonna be better. And it has that building roll until suddenly the car is gonna come to a screeching halt. And you have to decide before that happens what you want to do and how you want to spend your resources. And because of that, this game is getting my seal of approval. It's an excellent game, as long as you don't mind a heavier, longer game. Those are the two main things about it. There's a few little rule things that wouldn't be I like more clarification as to how things like not how they worked but like what happened in this scenario or this thing like an FAQ type of a thing but it is a prototype this is currently on Kickstarter so I'm gonna wait to see what it's all gonna look like at the very end but either way as it plays and as I played it currently I like this game uh, I really like this game Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Deep Shelf. If you're interested in picking up this game, it's currently on Kickstarter and there's a link down below in the description where you can pick it up. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Every Wednesday and every Sunday, we do a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play a unique new game that you can watch us play that will help us determine or help you determine if it's a game that's right for you. Seeing us play these type of games live, and knowing what it feels like and how how it functions will help determine. Even if you just watch it for five minutes, you go, okay, that's how it plays. I kind of get it more if a review video doesn't do it for you or like walk through type things. You can also go ahead and hit that like button. Let us know what you think about Deep Shelf down below in the comments. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Personally, I think this game looked gorgeous and I'm, that's my main thing. I was like, do you guys like the appeal to the colors and whatnot? I'm a huge fan of these blues and greens. And of course, subscribe if you'd like. Subscribing helps greatly with this channel. Hitting the notification bell to see more of our videos pop up helps if that's something you're interested in. But either way, just pushing that button is gonna make us really, really appreciative. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to delving into the deep shelf with you next time.